Good afternoon, it's June 5th, 2024, and I just kind of don't know what to say anymore, but we have to do disclaimers in case I say something, right? Let's go. This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. I want us to look at a common, commonly quoted phrase that has been appropriated culturally, but has its roots in the legal system. It's, it's the quote about the fruit of the poisonous tree, and it's a legal metaphor used to describe evidence that is obtained illegally. The logic of the terminology is that if the source or tree is tainted, then anything obtained will also be tainted. And that, you know, makes common sense, makes logical sense, but you have to stop and ask yourself, what feeds the tree? What nourishes the tree? What, um, you know, what causes leaves and flowers and fruit on a tree? It's the nutrients that the roots draw from what is under the tree. Trees are wonderful things. They are designed in part to clean up the waste material in the soil, in the environment, even in the air, plants in general for that matter, and return to the environment something good, something that feeds deer and squirrels and you know birds and whatnot, humans even something that gives us shade, some, it's always, the return from trees is always beneficial. When they're fed, what is nutritious? But like our example here, if you feed it poison, it will die. The main topic of conversation this morning is an interview that was done about a month and a half, almost two months ago, I heard about it this morning in a live with Michelle After Dark that was supposed to be about something completely different, but Michelle After Dark was informed that somebody else had reported that, Mich that Michelle had said that Summer Wells' body had been recovered, and it is totally false. And what's really irksome about this is that the person reporting this about Michelle quoted or cited her own Facebook group as the source. Again, totally false. But we did uncover the through this process of trying to prove that Michelle had never said Summer's body had been recovered, we did uncover this nonsense with the main topic of conversation this morning. The content of this interview with these two content creators was posted on March 22nd. 2024. And do you remember the last time we had a little chat, what that day was? Yeah, that was the same day that JLR took pictures of Seth and his right hand and left hand man in Natchez Trace Park. So why did Seth and the volunteers, including one of those gentlemen's mothers, Go searching in not just Trace Park. Um, could it be that another content creator fabricated something out of some vision or hallucination? You know, depending on how you interpret these things. And sent Seth there. The audience in general prefers to hear from a so-called psychic medium about things to do with a missing child, in this case, both Summer Wells and specifically Sebastian Rogers, so much so that the whole entirety of Michelle After Dark's audience would have had to have been watching 
today's live stream and then watched it again at least 10 or 15 minutes to give Michelle the same number of views as that single video with the so-called psychic medium who has not yet given us one actionable fact in almost three years on the disappearance of Summer Wells, much less an actionable fact on the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. Michelle's a pretty even-handed, mostly even-tempered person, and if I were in her shoes this morning and this had happened to me, I might be quoting someone from Bread and Circuses, otherwise known as the Coliseum from the movie Maximus. Michelle is a pretty um, insightful person and she has insight into her own character first. And she admits that she, like Chris Proudfoot, she's a bit of a hothead. And had she had her wits about her this morning, I'm pretty sure she would have been shouting this exact quote because it frustrates her to, as a retired professional, put her knowledge, training, and experience to the test every time she talks about a missing person's case, only to have someone like the good reverend, well, good doesn't apply here, but the reverend, that really doesn't apply here either, the psychic medium overshadow her by leaps and bounds because the audience wants the fruit of the poison tree. So what does that have to do with the title, The Roots of Rumors? Well, the swamp from which our dead or dying tree is drawing its nourishment is lies, manipulation, gossip, interchannel backbiting and harassment with a healthy, spicy dose of the F-bomb every three words. I listened to parts of two different commentators discussing this very same live stream on March 22nd, 2024, same day Seth was out searching at Natchez Trace, and literally every three words was an F-bomb. The commentators were going back and forth and um, mocking Seth, the parent of a missing child, to prop up Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot, the parents of a missing child. Please explain to me like I'm six years old, explain it to me like I'm six, how one behavior or one set of behaviors is more virtuous than the other, because frankly, I can't see it. But for now, for today anyway, I'm going to go do something positive for myself because I need something positive for myself to recharge my own tank. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you joining me. God bless you. And I'll see you real soon.